Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Tutorial. So, in the previous video, we discussed about the fourth layer of the OSI model, which was the transport layer. Okay. So, in this video, we are going to discuss about the next layer. Okay, the next higher layer, which is the session layer. Okay, the fifth layer of the OSI model. So this is the OSI model. So far we have covered physical layer, data link layer, network layer and transport layer all in separate videos. So you please check out those videos first before uh, coming to this video. So now we'll discuss about uh, session layer. Okay. So first let us discuss some basic concepts, some basic things related to session layer. So in some devices and in some application programs or processes, the first four layers, that is the physical, data link, network and transport. These four layers are not sufficient to meet the requirements of specific tasks or specific application programs. For them, some higher layers, some higher level of processing is required. The data has to be more filtered, more polished and more processed. And for that, we require more layers okay, in the network models. So here the next three layers come into play. The session layer, the presentation layer and the application layer. 5th, 6th and 7th layers respectively. So the session layer is the 5th layer of the OSI model and it is called as the network dialog controller. So why it is called as network dialog controller? Because when two devices or two systems or two nodes communicate with each other for exchange of data or information, they are undergoing or engaging in a dialogue. So that dialogue, that process of exchange of data is controlled by the session layer. How it controls it? Let's see. So it establishes, maintains and synchronizes the exchange of data between the two systems that are involved in the communication process. Okay. So, the session layer, it has two main tasks, okay, it has two main functions. First is dialogue control, second is synchronization, okay. The two main aspects that are controlled by the session layer is dialogue control and synchronization. So, in dialogue control, what happens is that the session layer it enables it gives permission or allows two systems to form a communication link to undergo a dialogue or to exchange data between each other okay they exchange data among themselves it allows them to enter into a dialogue for the exchange of data or information to form a communication channel so the session layer allows two systems to communicate with each other okay now how they will communicate it will be determined by the mode of communication which can be either half duplex or full duplex mode now we have already discussed about the modes of communication let us just have a quick uh, quick look at them so there are three type modes of communication simplex mode half duplex mode and full duplex mode so in simplex mode the communication between two devices is unidirectional in nature that is data can one device can only transmit data and the other device can only receive data for example in this figure device one is the sender device two is the receiver device 1 cannot receive data, device 2 cannot send data. So there is a 
unidirectional flow of data from device 1 to device 2 only. Data cannot flow from device 2 to device 1. Okay. Next is half duplex mode. In half duplex mode, both the devices involved can transmit and receive, but they have to do so at separate time slots. Okay. So it is bidirectional in nature, of course, because both devices can transmit, can send data as well as receive data, but they cannot do so at the same time. When one device is transmitting, other device has to receive, and when the other device is transmitting, the form uh, has to receive. Okay. So, for example, this the half duplex mode of communication between device 1 and device 2. At time slot 1, device 1 transmit, device 2 receives. Okay, the direction of flow of data is from device 1 to device 2. At another time slot 2, let's say, device 2 is the sender, device 1 is the receiver. Means device 2 is sending data, device 1 is receiving data. Now, at time slot 1, device 2 cannot transmit. At time slot 2, device 1 cannot transmit. Okay, device 1 can only transmit at time slot 1 and device 2 will receive at the same time. Device 2 will transmit at time slot 2 and device 1 will receive during that time period. Okay, so this is the half duplex mode of communication. Both devices can transmit as well as receive but they have to do so at different time slots. They cannot do it simultaneously at the same time. Next is the full duplex mode. So it is bidirectional in nature. Both the devices involved can transmit as well as receive and they can do it at the same time simultaneously. So here the two devices device 1 and device 2 there is bidirectional flow of data at all times. It means there is no restriction on or time slot provision. Device 1 can transmit as well as receive at any time. Device 2 can transmit as well as receive at any time. So this is the full duplex mode. So this mode of communication is governed by the session layer which is called as the dialogue control. Okay, how the two devices will communicate with each other and form a dialogue okay and turn into a dialogue next is synchronization so what synchronization means is that the session layer adds certain checkpoints okay called as uh, synchronization points in its data packets okay in the in its uh, data packets okay the session layer data packets consists of checkpoints or synchronization points in between like this. See, this is the data packet of the session layer. Here, H5 is the header information or the header portion of the session layer data packet. H stands for header 5 because it is the fifth layer of the OSI model. Now, the data bits are separated by these uh, gray rectangular portions which are called as the synchronization checkpoints. Now what these synchronization checkpoints do is that they act as reference and uh, make the trans uh, the transmission and reception of uh, data bits a bit easy. Okay. For example, suppose we have to send a book okay an ebook of 1000 pages so for that to make the process of transmission and reception easy what we do is that we add a checkpoint a synchronization checkpoint at every 100 pages we can do so at every 50 page at every 10 page at every 5 page or at every 200 page or at every 500 page according to our choice so suppose we decide that we have to add a synchronization checkpoint at every 100 page. So that is an example of a synchronization checkpoint which acts as a reference okay, in the transmission and reception of data. So this is the data packet of uh, a session layer. This 
is a bottom to top data flow this is during bottom to top data flow from receiver to sender and this is during uh, top to bottom data flow from sender to receiver so we know that the data flow direction is in this way from sender to receiver and again from sender to receiver so there is a up to down approach from the sender's side from top to bottom up to down and during the right hand side at the right hand side there is a up to down approach bottom to top okay top to bottom bottom to the top so that's why the arrowheads are placed in uh, the particular way here there is a top to bottom and here it is a bottom to top the direction of arrowhead is upwards so the direction of arrowheads is downwards so here we have discussed some of the basic concepts related to session layer so what we can conclude is that the session layer performs two most important functions associated with data communication which is dialog control and synchronization so it is called as the network dialog controller it has two main tasks first dialog control that is to decide the mode of communication whether it is half duplex or full duplex or simplex G generally simplex is not used it is always half duplex or full duplex and the other one is synchronization okay to add markers okay reference points checkpoints between equidistant portions of data for easier transmission and reception of the information so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much